um, that I want to take everyone through, particularly if this is your first experience um, of the Curious Piano Teachers. And um, we have been uh, going for just over um, just over five years. Um, it'll be six actually this May. Um, and at the Curious Piano Teachers, we have an online membership site where together we all learn as much as we teach. Members uh, get access to an extensive library of ready to use teaching sources and videos. And as I say, we've been doing this for since six years. So there's well over 50 topics there now. And those topics include, um, you know, how to plan lessons effectively, how to teach notation, how to teach techniques, sight reading, memorization, improvisation, uh, resources for all different ages and stages, right from teaching beginners um, to teaching um, the more advanced, teaching children, right up to teaching adults resources for educating our piano parents, which is obviously another really important um, element of, of what we do um, for creating studio policies and knowing how to most effectively run a, a piano teaching business. Lots of resources in there for members, right from you know, rhythm flashcards and eBooks and tons and tons of videos where you get to see things in action. So it's very practical, it's very specific. You can literally be you know, watching a video uh, in the morning and the next thing in the afternoon, you're applying that uh, to your own teaching. And just to move on to this slide, again, you're going to see lots more of Hannah on this call. Um, she's not joining us usually as a speaker for every call. So Hannah, we're particularly excited that you are contributing to this webinar. But Hannah is our wonderful, caring and supportive community manager who looks after all of our members. You'll get a weekly newsletter, um, e-newsletter from Hannah, and she interacts with our members, along with Sally and I, on our Facebook group. And ultimately, members get to connect with one another, and that's been one of the most powerful things, I think, about the community over this past year, actually needing more than ever to connect um, and to meet uh, lots of new teaching friends. So we're going to be telling you a little bit more about that later, but I want to just go back. I'm going to stop my share and check that. Sally, you've got sound. It's working. I have sound now. I have yeah. sound. It's like what happened there, I don't know, but these things always do. So hello, everybody, and welcome. And I can see that uh, we're completely maxed out with participants. Um, really, really popular, this webinar. So um, do stay around, because otherwise you're going to lose your place, because I suspect there's a lot of people also queuing up to come on. And I just think it's, it's, it's really interesting that this has been such a popular topic, this. And this whole webinar actually came out of a conversation that the three of us were having um, last week, actually, about 10 days ago, where we were sharing our experiences of our young pupils and some of the struggles that they were having. Not all of them, but quite a lot of them. So for me, for example, one conversation I had with a mum was that her uh, seven-year-old girl was, was really suffering from stress and anxiety. I mean, it's dreadful just to say that, isn't it? A seven-year-old suffering from uh, stress and anxiety. And this was as the result of being online for five hours of schooling every single day. And she was not sleeping well and stuff like this. And this is very level-headed mum. And she'd actually told the school, look, her, I'm, going, I'm going to focus on piano, violin and ballet. And everything else will just have to fit in around that because she could see that those were the things that were going to help her child to really be less stressed. And in a similar way, lots of other parents that week, I think with all three of us, were sharing how tired the children were, how tearful this was making them. And, um, you know, I think a lot of that was showing up probably in piano lessons as well. So it's obviously something that's been happening widely, not just with us, hence um, you all being really interested in this topic. So as part of this conversation, we were also, Sharon, Hannah and myself, were talking about pieces of music that we were finding our students really, really loving and pieces of music that, that were really helping them to deal with um, some of the anxiety and the stress, pieces that they were really loving to learn and to play. And they really seem to be providing them with a place of safety and comfort during what are these really difficult times. 
And uh, we've tried between us to kind of come out with some core characteristics for these pieces. And this is something I'll come back to later. But I think, you know, as we go through this, many of these are well-known songs. So many of these are pieces, especially in the younger age group, things that the children probably already know and hear. I think for others, they've been self-selected by the students. The students have come and said, oh, I'd really love to learn this. Um, the other thing that I think they, they all have in common is that they're well within the students' playing level. These on the whole are not pieces that are going to push them technically into a place that they're going to struggle with. They're pieces that are at the top of their comfort zone, maybe sometimes, but they know if they really work at them, they're going to get there. And the other thing is uh, that if they are arrangements, and quite a few of these are, they are satisfying arrangements. And we'll talk to you more about that as, as we go through. So here we go from us. I don't know whether Sharon's in place and ready here. Um, <laughs> I'll go and get myself in place. It's actually just, guys, to kind of put you in the, in the picture. I have a window right in front of me here. The sun has been streaming in and it just hits where I'm at. So that's why I've moved back. So I am now going to um, get myself into position. So I can talk for just two, a <laughs> couple more seconds. No, no. I will get into position. So we've had a lot of fun putting together these 10 pieces. These are just 10 pieces. They are not exclusively, you know, um, going to be absolutely the right ones obviously there are thousands of pieces out there and we'd love it if you've got pieces that you know have some of those characteristics we've just talked about um, please do share them in the chat you know that's what we are here for to help us all develop and learn from each other so do feel free to share any pieces you know and you have found recently are really switching your students on I'm just going to say one other thing before we get underway and I pass over to Sharon and that is that if you're watching this on catch up because it will be going onto our YouTube channel you'll find that um, some of the excerpts that we're going to play will not be there and that's purely because of licensing reasons we can play some some things live but we can't actually then put it out on YouTube so you'll find some of the more popular things in particular we won't be um, giving you examples of. So at this moment, I'm going to hand over to Sharon to start us off. Sharon, over to you. Wonderful. Thank you, Sally. And the sun is just behind a cloud at the moment. Not that because I live in Ireland, uh, I should ever be complaining about that because <laughs> the sun is not something we frequently get here a lot. So I'm going to start. Um, I've just been talking about Ireland, Northern Ireland. This particular um, piece is by June Armstrong, who is a composer based in Belfast. And I'm sure many of you may be familiar with this wonderful little book, um, Alphabet Easy Pieces for Piano. And I am going to play you, I'm going to bring it a little bit closer. Uh, I am going to play you her piece called S for Storm. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about why um, I have students who are loving this piece so much at the moment. So here we go, S for Storm. It's moved so that it's not going to be too distracting. So that is S for storm. And this is the easiest rote piece to teach. Um, I was actually doing a little bit of teaching on this this morning. And um, I don't know if you were able to hear there. I mean, we have so many repeated patterns. The left hand, we've got two very low Cs. Reaches down to the F, comes up to the G. And then when they put on a right hand, it is just simply, we've got the first three notes of the C minor scale. Um, I hear you say, do I need, does my student need to know C minor before they play this? Absolutely not. They just need to be aware of that little 
or three note pattern, and that's what we have. So we have the C repeated then, we play a C an octave higher. And obviously the fact it's so down here, this was what the student was telling me this morning, you know, what makes it sound dark and stormy? Um, it's because we're down here. And do you know, doesn't it, for the simplicity of it, just simply playing C coming up. Okay, a little bit of speed with that. It really sounds like something. You've got those really big, deep resonant notes there. So highly patterned piece, we get into um, the next section of the music and we've got a C minor triad. Fits really beautifully and comfortably under the hand. We have a slightly different bass pattern, moving down in steps from C dot B flat to A flat and to G. And of course then we're hearing that coming right back at the end. We've got a writ and it's almost like the storm is over. We in, uh, in Northern Ireland here, we've had a couple of days of really high winds. So it's something that is certainly, I don't know what it's been like in, in your part of the country, but um, stormy weather is something that the children can associate with at this point in time. So that was my first piece. Um, Sally, I just want to check, do you want me to go straight on into the next one? Yes, please do, Sharon, that would be great. Okay, perfect. So next piece is um, something from, sorry, you can't see that very well, um, from the joy, capturing the joy of winter. And um, this is a beautiful, beautiful book, um, collection of 16 pieces for solo piano by Barbara Ahrens and Alison Matthews. Um, just going to say that we have, I have permission from the composers themselves to um, perform their music. Now, um, this is um, two pages. I am aware that I just don't need to get carried away here. <laughs> so I mightn't play at all, but I'll give you enough to, um, to give you a sense of this. This is a piece called A Snowy Oil Takes Flight. So I want you to just imagine in your mind's eye, eye that you have a, um, it actually gives a, a little sentence here as the sun sets. So cold winter um, evening. The snowy oil awakes and takes flight, soaring silently over the winter landscape. So I want you to picture that. Um, I know many of you are probably still having snowy landscapes at the minute, so I want you to imagine that. The sun, the winter sun is setting, and here we have a snowy oil takes flight. <laughs> And so on. So what I love there is you've got this very delicate, frosty, magical sound up here. And I do apologize, my piano is horribly, horribly out of tune at the moment. Um, and then we have this lovely, rich sound. One of the things I love about this is the pattern that the composer Alison Matthews uses. It is, we have got this, we go up a fifth, up an octave, up in steps, and then we start in different places. So again, there is um, a certain amount of patterns um, to be following there. So my third piece that I'm going to look at is, is a hymn, because I am aware that some of our students are being invited to play. Um, if around you, your church is online, they're actually being asked to participate in the music making, whether it's just a solo piece or um, play, you know, for them for singing. But this is an arrangement. I came across this um, last summer 
It's someone called Glenda Austin. She's based in the USA. She is an arranger and she arranges uh, gospel music um, really, really beautifully. So this is an arrangement of a piece that I'm sure many of you are familiar with. It is Great Is Thy Faithfulness. Just to say it's about its intermediate level. into a different key there's a little bit more the one thing I really love and my intermediate students love about this piece is there is a glissando in it so I'm just I'm not going to play right through to there but I'm literally going to take from an it's an A flat seven chord and I'm going to show you what's happening with this glissando because it's really the kind of sparkly highlight uh, of this piece <laughs> Okay, and if you heard there, it modulates um, at that point as well. So, Greatest Life Faithfulness, arranged by Glenda Austin, and uh, obviously that there is um, a completely digital download, although I have also, these are also available as digital downloads as well. Okay. Sally. Yeah, what a wonderful glissandi that was, Sharon, coming down. Fantastic. People have just been asking uh, for clarification, which Hannah's been giving about the different levels. Because you just sort of state, so um, S for storm is a, um, yes. a beginner, sort of elementary, isn't it? Absolutely. Then when we've got um, the, the joy of winter, the pieces in this book... Um, are kind of really about grade four, five mm. um, is, is the level in, in this book. And if you like that one, The Snowy Oil Takes Flight, there is a lot of that sort of style of music. And actually, if you go and put Capturing the Joy of Winter into YouTube, you can actually hear all 16 pieces performed. And what I love is what the composers have done is, in some instances, they have the... Um, they have actually put, for example, a picture of a snowy oil, so you get right into it. It's a deeply imaginative thing, um, which is lovely. Really super. So the last one. The last one I would say, okay, we go into, um, when we get into that next section, we're in D flat major, okay? Um, so my feeling is that really, Let's bear in mind that we're wanting a student not to struggle with this. So I would go to say, I mean, it's probably about grade six standard, mm -hmm. but if you're wanting your grade seven or eight student to have something that they can perform as part of a church solo piece, then that's really the level that you're looking at there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it, it's interesting, isn't it, how it, it, you know, we've said it needs to be well within their level, but actually if they really love a piece, they will take themselves that little bit further to to really learn a piece and it, it struck me as you were playing that another another characteristic of all these pieces is they allow the students to develop a personal connection to them 
Um, and I, th I think that's really one of the, the, the key characteristics here, that they have that personal co connection. Yeah. Oh, that was quite a treat, Sharon. And I should say as well, because I think we just, I'm just going to touch on this briefly, is having, we talked about this in our community chat just the other, um, last Friday, about students learning something to be able to, in the instance we were talking about, was to play it to their grandparents or to have a purpose. Again, something like this might be that opportunity to actually contribute to the online church and to, to have something. So it's also really nice if they have a, you know, some someone, something they're actually going to use it, yeah. use it for is also can be a very key motivational thing that they can actually see, oh, I want to keep working at this because I want to be able to go play it for this person or use it in this way. Yeah, really, really good point. So thank you, uh, Sharon. Hannah, do you want to um, bring yourself on and I'll just uh, change the view? Because I think you've, you've had that recently with your son, haven't you? Um, that he's had, he's had to play in front to a, record something for his school. Do you want to? Absolutely. Um, so the school that he's part of, they collect um, video recorded pieces from the students and edit them together and for a private YouTube concert. Um, so it's really nice. And actually mm. quite a few of them have been really keen to take part because they're playing pieces that they know and pieces that they love. Um, I love Sharon's selections. I also loved Arthur Rainbow from the same book from Alphabet too. Yeah. Um, when we first went into lockdown, we did a bit of a rainbow theme in the studio and that was another favourite from that book. So I absolutely love it. Thank you for sharing that. It was brilliant. Um, so my choices, I guess, are shamelessly popular <laughs> in in the t in sense that they are really well known um, and the students love them because they know how they go. So my very first one comes from this book, comes from Playtime Piano um, and it's the Star Wars arrangement. So you've got um, a really satisfying arrangement of Star Wars, which starts more or less in the five finger position. So if I show you my hands for a moment, let's see if I can do that. You should be able to see that. Um, you have more or less the five finger position, which is quite easy for them. But then there's just this really nice where they, where they get that gorgeous kind of exuberant hand crossing moment, which I absolutely love. And they love too. It, it really just fits. It's, it goes back to this idea that the arrangement, even of a well-known piece really matters. Um, so it's, it's been immensely popular Star Wars and, and you can imagine it, it, it's, it's great for studio challenges. It's great for bringing an element of fun into the lesson, an element of costume. I've heard of people kind of dressing up in their lessons a little bit if they want to do things like that. Um, but also just that you can explore. John Williams is such a great composer um, and he can... Um, there are so many pieces that we can take the student from once they've learned um, Star Wars. Charlotte's asking if I can play it. I'm going to drop um, a, a link into the chat with the um, uh, with the score. Unfortunately, I can't play it at the moment um, due to the licensing issues that we mentioned earlier, but I will put the score into the chat and it's a really, really lovely, um, lovely sort of example of a well-known piece so it's from playtime popular um and it's john williams celebrated his 89th birthday re recently there are some fantastic podcasts that you can share with your students this is beginner level this is um very much your beginner readers this would be for my students who are working through Piano Safari 1, beginning of Piano Safari 2, they'd be very, very comfortable with this. So um, this is five finger position um, and it's level one, it's this book here. So it's largely five finger melodies with some kind of ch extra challenges. What I like about Star Wars, so some of the particular challenges from that one is that you get to teach um, flats in one of the bars. It's got a descending scale with some of the flats in and, and you, they, your students might come across DC or DS Alcoda for the first time 
in this piece. So that's something that you can, another teaching point that you can, that you can give them. Um, quite often they will want to progress to the next level. They'll want to progress to Showtime Piano, to level 2A, and you've got a really nice arrangement of Hedwig's theme in here, which is a nice progression if they're a little bit further. So yeah, so Playtime Piano is all level one. That's right. Um, and it's, it's just a really nice thing. You could have a studio challenge where you um, explore John Williams and that would, I, I'm just suggest that that might go down really nicely at the moment because there was just so many pieces at all levels, some great arrangements at all levels. Um, but the Star Wars one is a really nice accessible one. I'm just going to drop into the chat this really helpful link which just sets out the, the book that I'm talking about. So um, one of the benefits of being a member of Curious is that you can get discount on sheet music. Um, and we are really pleased to work with musicroom.com and Blackrock Music so that we um, can offer our members exclusive discounts on some of these things. So this is a web page which will show you some of the series and if you go to playtime piano you can actually have a look at that first score page there okay and then some of the other things that have been really popular one of my more kind of image conscious um, students younger students they've really loved the next level up the hits book and there's an absolutely fab piece in here called Havana and again if you jump onto the link that I've posted in the chat if you look at Showtime Piano, I think you've got the first page of this. Um, it's really nice. It's a nice one to teach by rote because the first three phrases are exactly the same. So they, if, you if you've taught it once, they have quite a nice easy win. You can teach it in more or less one lesson very quickly by rote by playing the three phrases and they note they can see the pattern. It's nice to teach it by rote and then show them the score because they can see um, what they've played and it's really fun and there are some little challenges in there like accidentals explaining sharps and flats there's a really fun latin groove for this one as well and I'm really looking forward to playing some of the duet parts with them when we get back to socially distant lessons yeah absolutely these links will be available after the webinar we're going to pull everything together in a blog post for you and share it so because we're aware there's quite a, a sort of a wealth of information that we want to share with you um so these are just two really popular um, examples of pieces that have actually worked in real life lessons with me recently. Um, the whole series, I can highly recommend Playtime and Showtime. So Playtime, just to be um, kind of clear on that, it's more beginner. So it's mostly five finger with the odd kind of di diversion away from that. The Showtime piano is slightly more challenging, so you might get more accidentals, some very simple chords, and it's a little step up. But the nice thing about it, the, the reason I like these series is that you can see the books are quite small. They don't break the bank. If you're asking a parent to buy something else, it's it's inexpensive. They're under five, five UK pounds, and I believe five dollar around the five dollar mark if you're in the US. Um, and there are other pieces in these books that your students will recognise. So if you start them off on one, then likely, as I've seen with my son, you know, he'll he'll flip through the book and go, oh, I could play this as well. And you're encouraging your children, your, your students, to be um, curious. Um, I don't know how many of us remember kind of have, getting an anthology, buying it for one piece, and then getting really excited about some of the other pieces that are in the book just by leafing through. And that brings me on to my intermediate choice, which is exactly what happened with this intermediate choice. So I can screen share a little bit of this one. Okay. So this is from the Graded Piano Player book, grades two to three. So this worked really well for a student in the last lockdown last year who had just taken grade three and was looking for some light relief in between grades. Um, one of the alternative pieces on the old ABRSM syllabus was Wouldn't It Be Lovely? But also in this book, she really loved Husher by Mountain. So if I can just share my screen with you and show you a bit of that. Okay, it should be coming up in just a moment. Can you see that? Okay, so 
you've got a really gorgeous left hand melody. You can see how this would be really, really good for teaching legato pedal. It would be, it's great for teaching voicing, how to voice a left hand melody. And it's just so lush and flowing. So really, really lovely piece to try with your students. And it's, it ticks all those boxes again. It's a well-known piece. It comes from a, for a well-known children's film. They're going to likely know how it goes, but it's also a really satisfying musical arrangement. Okay, so and Jane's saying she loved this as well. She really enjoyed this book as well. I mean that there are we're really fortunate these days. There are lots of these books which arrange these popular pieces so well, and I think just having that familiarity is so important because it can then lead them on to other places. So this particular student then went on to play Iron Aldi, then she went on to play some Barbara Ahrens, as um, Sharon was talking about earlier. So these techniques that they're picking up in the well-known familiar pieces will then you know, stand them in good stead for, um, for pieces that they may want to learn later on, which are less familiar to them. Okay, um, so finally, my last choice, again, um, shamelessly popular. <laughs> so I love this. This is a recent discovery for me. This is Benny Anderson's piano album and it's absolutely brilliant. Um, the piece that I wanted to highlight was Thank You For The Music. And again, I will screen share a portion of the score. It's, um, it's definitely grown up ABBA. So I have a grade eight student at the moment who loves to play in her spare time. She loves to play anything from musicals, um, she's really enjoyed the selections from Mamma Mia. So we were chatting the other night about what she might also like to play just for, for fun. And I'd, I'd found this and she was really excited by it. So you can see that there's, there's plenty to challenge the advanced student here. Okay. There's absolutely, it's, it's a gorgeous lush arrangement as you can imagine. Um, and I will drop the album into the, the link to the Spotify album in the chat again for licensing reasons. That's the way we need to do this. So um, it's just beautiful the way that you've got. But there's plenty to challenge your advanced student. You've got your three against two rhythms. You've got further on in the piece, you've got plenty of octaves um, voicing. You've got a music hall section. You've got a really lovely section where the left hand you might want to consider voicing like a cello and you can talk to them about playing orchestrally, all these kinds of things. So it's just absolutely gorgeous. And I will see if I can drop into the chat a link to the album, which is just lovely, just stunning. So this is the point where I probably accidentally share it, but it's all good. <laughs> so, um, but I would just for us as well, I mean, it's a, it's a nice one for us to go and um, share as well. Here we go. This is the, I'm gonna put the album link just in the chat right here there we go so that's the album that this comes from and these are direct transcriptions from benny anderson's um abba so it's actually it's other things too it's from chess there's things from anthem um but i love the thank you for the music it's it's probably the most well-known piece in the book but it also the sentiment for now i just love it I think it just it just shows us that you know music is still something we can enjoy even in lockdown with COVID restrictions. It's it's just oh, it's perfect. So I'm very excited about that. I know Sally has this book too. So yeah, those are my choices. I certainly do, Hannah. Here it is, my Benny Anderson piano, and uh, I think it's it's really. I mean, he's done the arrangements himself, um, or he's got some. He's yeah, he's arranged them and then got somebody else to write them down. I think for him. And my favourite from it, uh, that, I, that I can happily sit and play one evening when I'm feeling a bit chilled out, is I Wonder, um, which is also Departure. So that's, that's a lovely one um, that I really like. And shall I tell you a curious thing about this book? <laughs> it has, a, it has a, a picture in the middle of it uh, with an old boyfriend of mine playing the double bass. And I was at that performance, that very first performance <laughs> of chess in 1984 so there's something you didn't know to be <laughs> that's very curious indeed sally <laughs> everyone will be <laughs> buying the book for that to figure it out <laughs> nothing else now, which was sally's boyfriend <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it was all with the LSO. Hannah, that, yeah, that was uh, lovely to hear about those different choices. It was wonderful, choices. thank you. Um, and the, you know, this, the, the series that you've, you've commented on, uh, the Faber books, actually I've just pulled out mine, because I've got them just here as well. Yes, I've got quite a few of them, and they all, they all work, you know, there a lot of them a really good musical and satisfying arrangements. So I think that's what you're finding, isn't it, Hannah? Absolutely. Well. Yeah. Yeah. They work on their they work as solos and they work really nicely as duets. I think that's the nice yeah. thing, especially when you're online, because you kind of you want the solo part to work just as well as the duet. Yeah, ab absolutely. Absolutely. And um I'm actually going to take over from Hannah, I think, at this point, and just continue with this same series because um, for me, back in uh, the autumn term, when I started back teaching again and I was all online, I thought, oh, the kids will need something. So I actually went off and got lots of Disney books um, and I've got pre-time piano, Disney and playtime piano Disney and showtime piano Disney and then over the Christmas holidays um, I said having come out of the Christmas holidays in the week before I said that I, I created this little five-day challenge to get them all back into playing the piano and one of the things was to choose a piece that you would like to learn and I think self-determination about pieces they want to learn is a really really important motivating factor because almost every piece, yeah, almost every piece that I'm going to share with you have been chosen by my students that they would like to learn. And um, the one in pre-time piano Disney actually came out also of the fact that it has been a bit cold and a bit snowy. And in one lesson, I said to my, um, my little beginner, who's, who's only been having lessons online completely for six months, I said, um, Oh, have you been out being a, building a snowman? And she said, oh, I built a snow dog instead. I thought, fine, fine, fine. I'm hoping everybody can hear me because I know that my sound was a bit quiet. So I'm hoping that because there's no comments there that you can all hear me better. Yeah, at the minute, it's fine. Yeah, that's fine. It's good. So, um, of course, you know, she, she then said, oh, do you know, in my book, in my Disney book, do you want to build a snowman? I said, fantastic, shall we learn it? She said, yes. So there we go. She is learning, do you want to build a snowman? And again, copyright reasons, I can't actually play it to you, but I think we all know it and we can sing, do you want to build a snowman? And it's great for her because it's very, very achievable. She has it in her head. Um, and it's a little bit challenging as well. You know, there are things in this that she doesn't know yet. And so she's learning. So it's not just a standing still piece. It is a, oh, let's develop our skills and concepts as well. What I'm tending to do, and I've been doing it particularly this half term, is recording um, the accompaniments and then send, sharing it with them via cadenza. And then they can, they can play along with the accompaniment. And of course, that's another skill in itself, isn't it? Just them learning to stay with us. They can't, they can't stop when there's an accompaniment and they can't repeat notes and go back again. They have to learn to keep going through to the end. So that probably means they'll try and try and try and try again and again, practicing until they can keep it running all the way through. So that is from pre-time piano. So this is for the beginner. And as I say, these, these are a series. So pre-time are all um, landscape. And they're all at this primer level. They are all primer level books. I'm just going to quickly come in with two others while I'm here um, because another, another child had playtime piano and this is all level one. And again, I said to her, what would you like to learn? And she came out with Gaston from Beauty of the Beast. Never heard it in my life. But she has had a lot of fun learning it. And it's, it's very Parisian. Um, it has this wonderful Parisian waltz to go with it that I've recorded and shared with her. So I should be really interested to see how that goes. And it's, gosh, it disturbs me to see you, Gaston. So this is Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. And that is four pages long. So she's also got to learn how to turn the page as she goes. Turn the page. 
huge, you know, all skills that we need to learn as pianists. Um, so that is Playtime Piano. And the last one from this series, I know I'm being cheeky, I'm doing three in one. Um, so this is level 2A and this is Showtime Piano, Disney. And so this is a little bit harder. Um, but, and I've, I've got one lad who has learned just off his own bat about five of these. He started with Chimchimmery, I can say that word, for Mary Poppins. And he's also working on at the moment, uh, oh, you know, he started with He's a Pirate from Pirates of the Caribbean. Do, 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 that one. And he, every week he's, he's tried something new, um, which is, which is so, so delightful to see. Proud Corazon. So I'm getting to learn lots of Disney songs as well, because many of these films I don't, I, I haven't ever seen. So those sort of are beginners and elementary uh, level. Definitely that particular series is, is an absolute gift for these songs that the children know that, um, will help them really uh, take ownership of it and will they'll develop a very firm personal connection with it. So I want to move on now to um, some pieces for intermediate level, probably a little bit lower than Sharon. So these are sort of um, what I might call early intermediate, grade two, maybe grade three going on. And with, um, with these two pupils that I've got, both boys, um, we've been doing ragtime. We've been doing ragtime. And it came out of the original um, impetus has come out of Piano Safari, the, the repertoire, book three. Book three. And in there we have chromatic rag. So let me play you the chromatic rag. And this is by our good friend and colleague Christopher Fisher. So thank you, Chris, for writing this because I'm finding... Um, Kids really like this. Here we go. jolly happy chirpy piece and it, it's got characteristic ragtime things like the steady left hand um, and the syncopation in the right hand and being chromatic rag it's a great way of getting them practicing their chromatic scales and understanding as well what chromatic notes do to a melody in terms of making it more interesting giving it a richer sound etc etc there are some tricky bits to do, definitely, you know, these bits where they have to keep it flowing. Um, and the other thing I really love about this is that D minor section. So it really helps to uh, highlight, if you like, the change from the major to the minor and how you can change the mood completely. You can tell I like that because the way I, the way my whole body goes. So. Um, the chromatic rag that was, and that is in unit six of uh, Piano Safari 3. Really, really lovely piece. And with one of my students, of course, that led him on to wanting to learn the entertainer. And there was a personal connection for him as well with the entertainer because um, his mum had a copy of the entertainer that she had learned herself when she was his age. And so before I knew it, actually, when, when we came back after Christmas, he'd already started to learn it. Now, this is slightly too hard for him. Yeah, slightly too hard for him. Nevertheless, you know, he's he's absolutely managed to play the first section of this 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 particular version of the entertainer. 
I'm not going to say a specific version because there are many, many versions of the entertainer around and about that some are free and some are in books and some, for example, one book that you can find it in is this one, The Intermediate Pianist, book two, and that is a really good series by Karen Marshall and Heather Hammond. So there's a, a, a really good arrangement in that, you know, we all know. an advanced piece even in its simplest version because it, it is in the right key and it's got you know all the chromatic notes as well but you can find really easy versions but this one is definitely um, a good intermediate level um, and I've said to him you know it could be that we will learn it in sections and he's learnt the first section um, up to um, sorry then maybe we'll come back and learn the other bits later. We'll see. At the moment he's highly, highly motivated by it because of that personal connection, the fact that his mum has learnt it. Really, really um, makes such a huge difference. So that is for my intermediate students, ragtime. They are loving, they're both boys and I think it would work with girls as well, but they're both loving ragtime playing. So now on to the final selection from me and these are this is for ad more advanced students and I've got two pieces again I'm cheating a bit here but this will give you your 10 this is number nine and ten um, these are both pieces by the composer Ben Crossland and I will share the score with you in a minute or two once I've just played now I have a student who is now seven, 17 and when she was about 13 or so she was struggling a little, struggling a little to kind of find that motivation and I at the time had this book Cool Beans Volume 1 Dreams, Themes and Love Songs by Ben Crossland and this is published by Editions Musica Ferrum uh, with the wonderful Nicholas Sedaris as uh, who was running it and I found this piece in it it's called a view from a window I'll give you a little blast over the page it uh, builds up a little bit this the third page is quite tricky but very beautiful see if I can give you a quick blast <laughs> thoughtful peaceful music that's quite satisfying to play I have to say and Sasha just fell in love with this piece totally and utterly fell in love with it and has played it ever since and if she needs to go to the piano to play this is the piece she'll pull out and play she played it in her GCSE recording um, last year as well and um, you might be interested that actually that piece is on the grade 6 ABRSM syllabus and it's a list C piece very very well worth getting as as the whole series the whole of the book has got some beautiful pieces in it so Sasha fell in love with this piece and she fell in love with all the pieces in the book and she decided oh, I like this composer Ben Crossland absolutely right really quality stuff 
Um, and she took matters into her own hands, I think, in the autumn term, and she did some research. And she also discovered that um, Ben has got a, a, a new ser fairly new series out called Songs from Rainbow Hill. Now, I don't have the book for that at the moment, but I'm very grateful to Nicholas Sedaris for giving me permission to have um, a, a PDF of it, which I will show you in a moment. This is not for sharing. This is only for to, to, to show you a uh, sense of it. Um, so Sasha had found songs from, from Rainbow Hill and she asked if she could have it for Christmas. And it duly arrived on Christmas. And ever since then, she's been every week, she will bring along one piece. She said, I like this one. I like this one. Now, she knows that for some of the some of the pieces are currently, you know, stretching her. This first one I'm going to play to you. Um, she knows she's playing it massively under speed, but she is loving them so much. And she's loving the decisions that she's making herself about playing it. And it's it's expanding her musical um, her musical understanding and her awareness and it's also leading her a bit like Hannah was saying earlier into all sorts of other areas where she is now playing Telemann she is playing um, some some of the pieces from the um, other I can't can't think of what she's playing off the top of my head but she has really got herself into playing the piano in quite a deep way and is going there she said last week she said I went to the piano quite a lot this week just to play just to play and these are the sort of things she plays so let me just um let me just give you a little little blast of songs from Rainbow Hill but before I do actually I think I will just come and share the screen briefly with you so that you get to see I am ignoring all the chat at the moment but I, I will I will come and talk in a moment so yeah this was view for the window this was view from the window um, which is as I say at about a grade six level and the pieces in this book do vary because this first one that I'm going to play, which is that one, f First Rain of Summer, um, this one is, is slightly more advanced. It requires quite, quite fine technique, really. Whether I can play it to you or not at this moment in time with cold fingers like I've got at the moment, I'm not entirely sure. And it, it is quite long, this one. So you're not going to get me playing it all. And it goes into... Uh, I think it's D flat major. Not sure. Yeah. Well, I'd have to look at that more. Yes, and and then you've also got G flat major there as well. Okay, as you can tell, I haven't actually learnt the whole piece. Um, but let me just give you a little little blast of the beginning of it, and see whether this this works or not. I'm just going to take a headphone out as I do that. <laughs> you a sense of the piece and the shimmering light that of, and the play that he manages to get from the sounds and the textures of the piano with just these odd little notes that that have to appear out but but to get that whole is is, is quite a delicate operation on the piano i think it's really really beautiful and and just tones and textures I can imagine the rainbows with that first rain of summer. 
So those are my three choices for you and I'm just going to come back now and just see if I can have a look at the chats that are going on a bit. Which I can't remember. There we go. Oh, well, hello again. That was wonderful, Sally. Thank you. I absolutely love that final piece that you played. Yeah. We've okay, well, the chat has been really active, which has been wonderful. Hannah put out an invitation for you guys to, to get involved and share. And share, you have been indeed. It's been fabulous. Thank you all so much. I love Anushka's comment. We, we asked um, you to share your suggestions about what makes a mood lifting piece. I mean, we kind of explored this at the start. And Anushka has said, for me, it's anywhere they can escape to and or describe a story in their own words. Mm. And I just love that. And then Charlotte says, mine are enjoying Ride Like the Wind by Wendy Stevens, music that kids love. And there's, there's just been so many suggestions in the chat. So thank you for providing such a rich selection for everyone to yeah. choose from. Yeah. It's because you know, we are so blessed as pianists, aren't we? We do have this fairly endless supply <laughs> and sometimes it can be overwhelming. But I think going to the students and asking them, um, even if they need a little mm -hmm. bit of guidance from the younger ones, they nevertheless will know songs. Yeah. And you, you know, you sometimes have to say, well, do you know any Disney ones or do you know this? Or, you know, have you seen any good films recently? Um, or even just drop an email to parents and say, has she got any songs or he got any songs or, or things that they would like to learn. I've got, I've got one lad, one of my, one of my intermediate ones is, is learning something or has taught himself a riff from a rap piece called I'm Blue. <laughs> <laughs> which is and it's it is a <laughs> it is a piano that plays um and plays and plays and it plays the same thing over and over and over again and then this rap comes in over the top you know um but even that he's transposing it into different keys mm -hmm. so that in itself is is really quite interesting always worth asking them i think yeah and i think a term that you used earlier on sally which i think is just so vitally important is self-determination mm -hmm. and giving our students that opportunity to make choices about what ultimately is their learning and getting them involved um, hearing about what it is um, they love listening to I mean even if you are having a lesson with a student and it's feeling sticky it's not going so well I mean, so much of the time when that happens, it is actually because we are actually, we're driving, we're in the driving seat, we're doing too much driving. We need to pass over to our students and, and let them drive and take control for a little while. Even if it's just to find out about what music they are listening to at, uh, that's, that's already been mentioned, just having a conversation. What do you love listening to? Um, and just giving them that time and that space which I think at this point in where all of our students, a lot of our younger students, um, school age students are at at the minute is this struggle. And obviously that has been very much the inspiration for this particular webinar, because we know that you guys out there as piano teachers are seeing this all the time. Um, and just because it, it feels like they haven't zoned into their lesson doesn't mean they're actually not enjoying their lesson because sometimes our egos we can take this quite personally and think oh, it's something to do with us but it's actually there there's just so many things that they are struggling with and it's knowing what we can do to just put them at the center of the lesson at the end of the day they are the heroes of their own lessons and it's not about us it's really not about us um, we are not there so that we can teach we are there so that our students can learn and so that has to go and, and filter right through into repertoire choices it's so important that they have a say absolutely and i think this is something that you dip into quite a lot more in a, one of our curiosity boxes which is one of our, our monthly fo foci so in the community we have a focus each month a different piano teaching focus and we had one a while back on motivation and choice was a big element of that 
um it's it's just so important isn't it and i think there's that element of us making ourselves vulnerable as teachers if they suggest something we're not entirely comfortable with or haven't re- don't really know because they love to teach us something as well and i think that is feeling okay with that as a teacher is is quite important isn't it so it it's it it makes for that kind of two way collaborative style which makes for curious students i think yeah and i think this idea of progress you know progress can be that way (laughs) rather than always on Mm -hmm. onwards and next grade next grade i think at this point in time and this is definitely what i'm doing the progress is happening like this and actually it's filling up as that progress happens because we're not playing necessarily harder and harder pieces it's it their standard their level is actually rising as they go through the the process of learning some of these pieces and um i think sometimes we think we've just got to keep going you know should be on the next book should be doing the next thing give it a break give it a break just go just go that way for a bit and you'll find you automatically go that way as well (laughs) so true so true yeah. It is. Yeah. And I think the importance of giving students repertoire that is below their current um, playing level also is, is hugely important. I know when I was a student learning, if I was at grade five level, I, and which I really at that point wasn't, <laughs> but the only repertoire I learned was a grade five piece. It's so important that they get to play um, music that is, that feels a lot easier and that way they get to reinforce concepts and learn music a lot quicker too, which in itself um, becomes a really strong motivational factor too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that has just been so much fun, Sharon and Hannah. Really, it lovely has. To listen to all your pieces and <laughs> and um, and exp- and just hear all these different pieces of repertoire that that are around and about. And what have we done? We've maybe talked about. 12 or 13 in total but um i already feel richer for the experience sharon absolutely no it's been a real joy um to be here today thank you so much to everyone who has joined us you can see that the sun is now out with me again (laughs) um but it has been a wonderful hour we have absolutely loved spending it with you guys thank you again for all of your suggestions and i know that we are going to um be putting all together those lists. I know I've, for example, popped a few links up, but there will be um, look out for the email that comes through and there will be um, more links and suggestions and in that. Anna's going to write a blog on I am. Friday for I am. Our, um, our Curious Piano Teachers website. And in that blog, she'll be summing up, won't you, Hannah? You That's right. I'll be put. It? That's right. I'll be putting in all of the links to the publications that we've shown today and the composers. And we just want to thank all of the composers that have allowed their works to be performed and screen shared and the publishers as well for allowing us um, particularly want to name Hal Hal Leonard. We want to name Music Editions, Ferrum, um, all of the composers. Also, yeah. So all of the all of the compo- all of the publishers that um, have made it possible for us to share these pieces with you today, um, we also for our members we offer exclusive discount deals on sheet music purchasing for with um, two different websites with musicroom.com actually more than two, musicroom.com, Alfred, um, also Blackrock Music UK. So we come do come and have a look if you are looking to buy some of these. Um, things that we're suggesting today because we do have these discount links for you within our membership i'm just going to type into the um, comments um, if you're not yet a member there is your first month is free if you are a brand new member and um, if you go to the curious piano teachers.org um, forward slash join i'm just putting that in the comments there now um, it hasn't appeared as a link I may have yeah. spelt something wrong, but the curious piano teachers.org forward slash join. Go over there, you will find a coupon code and come and we would love you to join us um, for a trial um, inside the, uh, the membership site. Get to know a few more piano teaching friends because we all do, especially at this time, feel a lot stronger uh, together. 
And for everyone who's first time on, on one of our webinars, just a special um, welcome <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and glad you've enjoyed it. It's been lovely to have you with us today. So thank you for joining us if it's been your first webinar with Curious. It's an absolute pleasure to have you with us today. Wonderful. Yeah. So I think I'll just wrap up, shall I, for, for us all and say thank you all so much for, for coming along. It's been a lot of fun. We'll be back with more webinars. And if you're on Instagram, then maybe look out for us Friday morning because I think we're going to um, be throwing some puppets around or something, aren't we, Han? Anyhow, that's <laughs> it from us today. And thank you so much. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye for now. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye. Bye.